Cheers and salutations. Welcome, everyone, to Hard Lens Media. This is a special uh, interview that we are setting up with a good friend of the show, none other than one of the few people that is speaking truth to power, and dare I say it, uh, at least somebody who's setting up a campaign that is aggressively pushing back against APAC Democrats and those that are indifferent to the crisis that's happening not only in Gaza, but the overall madness and insanity that neoliberalism is putting upon the American people. Give it up for none other than the legend himself, Jose Vega, who has at this point in time, went all in for his campaign for uh, Congress as a independent candidate. So, Jose, uh, a lot's been happening with your campaign. What is going on? What is it like in the trenches? Because obviously you guys have been fighting the good fight, and it's very rare that we actually have people speaking truth to power. So lay it on us. What's going on, my friend? Well, the first thing is I'm considering different haircut options. Um, you know, if you have any suggestions, maybe keep the fro on the top and cut the side short. I don't know if anybody wants to email my campaign, Jose at votevega.nyc. You know, you let me know. Uh, uh, and then this, this has got to go. So that's the very first thing. No, you, you, you said it, you know, I'm, I'm all in on my campaign now. Uh, I just quit my job. I quit my job last mm -hmm. Friday. Uh, but I've also gone through some personal things too. I have no time for a social life anymore. Um, mm -hmm. no more hanging out with friends, no more trying to, you know, woo any, anybody, no more girls coming my way from now till November, every ounce and fiber of my being is dedicated, not even just to this campaign. It's dedicated to humanity because this campaign is not a vanity project. It's not a, not a way to get rich quick. I'm trying to stop a genocide here and I'm trying to send a message through my campaign and I want to mobilize people to actually act and do something right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if if I'm not putting every inch of myself, given the fact that I'm a congressional candidate, well, then I'm I'm not doing what I need to do. And so that's why I'm I'm jumping full, uh, full steam ahead here now. And it is a little scary because I don't have that safety net of of working at a coffee shop anymore for some guaranteed income. So I, you know, don't really know what I'm going to do, but I just know I have to do this. And uh, now we're about two weeks away from petitioning. You know, people mm -hmm. ask me to run. People want me to you know, run against Richie Torres. And I am mm -hmm. now when people want to, people want to vote for me come November, I need 10,000 signatures um, mm -hmm. in a six week window. So New York state law, you cannot collect petition signatures until April 16th. And the last day you can collect them is May 28th. We need a minimum of 3,500 signatures, but because they can be challenged, we need three times that. We need to assume nice that point. Richie Torres' team is going to look through my signatures and try and bounce them off. Like, oh, this we can't read the handwriting on this one. This person's not a registered voter, so they're going to try and kick us off the ballot that way. So we need to make sure we get at least three times the signature requirements, if not four or five or ten. So has your uh, campaign reached out to any potential allies, independents, such as libertarians, greens, socialists, or anybody else who's been, well, more or less disappointed with the two-party hypocritical system, most notably with the Democrats and how they're turning a blind eye not only to domestic issues but to foreign issues as well? Has there been any kind of ground communication with them, any kind of coalition building so that maybe people, if they want to help out your campaign, they, they at least know where to go, even if they might not politically align with you? Sure. I mean, people can go on my website and then just hit the volunteer button that and then there's an option there that asks if you can help me petition. If you're here in New York, you know, city and you hit the volunteer tab right there, you know, uh, you can sign up right there. You will get a personal call from me. I will call you personally to. to and we're in the middle of updating our website right now, too. So you're going to see probably by the end of probably by the time this goes up uh, that you're you're watching us, it'll be updated. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you hit the volunteer button, you can sign up there in terms of working with other campaigns right now, I'm working with Diane Sayre. She's trying to get 90,000 signatures cause she needs, she's a statewide candidate. And so we'll be carrying each other's petitions. And I believe mm -hmm. through her also, she's been reaching out with the libertarian party as well as other parties that are, are trying to also get on the ballot. So, you know, it's going to be a, a, a kind of pandemonium. Uh, here in New York State, because the the law is just so horrific uh, mm -hmm. that uh, it's designed to keep people off the ballot, and the only people who are going to fight against that are people like your viewers who decide to actually come out on the streets and um, um, help us out. If somebody wants to fly out, they want to pay their airline. What I can guarantee them is housing. 
I mean, I can't guarantee it, guarantee it right now, but I will find somewhere for them to sleep in. I'll find somewhere for them where they can lay their head at night. And yeah. So when we look at this uh, campaign, obviously, I, I I know all too well about collecting signatures. We've interviewed Greens and Libertarians and Independents here in the state of Illinois, and it is just a draconian. They need a certain amount of uh, signatures, and every I must be dotted, every T must be crossed. So, and obviously, it's quite similar uh, in, in New York State, apparently, because there's there's a huge, uh, I guess. There's one time when both parties can actually work together, and that is denying third parties and independents from being on the ballot. Um, why? Uh, now that you're all in, people are going to cop you. you. Well, well, why are you all in for challenging the incumbent? I mean, isn't the current leader of your congressional district good enough? I mean, what are some of the criticisms that you have about the current incumbent that you will be facing off against? Jesus, kid, you might as well have thrown me a softball. I mean, like, <laughs> it's Richie Torres. Well, let's, my let's, 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 let's hear about him. Let's hear about him. <laughs> my opponent is Richie Torres, who calls himself the champion of Israel, who is the congressman for the poorest con congressional district in the country. About 32% of people who live in this district are below the poverty line. That's the highest margin in any other congressional district in the country. Right. And where is Richie Torres right now? He's in Israel right now. He's literally in Israel. <laughs> OK, meeting with like opposition and Netanyahu and other people over there. OK, I mean, like if he's running for the Knesset, he should just say that he should just go do that. That's fine. You know, but he does not represent the interests of the Bronx. He's now had two terms and the Bronx is still just as bad as it was, but the country is still just as bad as it was, and he has no intention of ever fixing it. He doesn't advocate for the Bronx. He doesn't actually do anything for the Bronx. Yep, there he is right and there. There he is, Israel. right there in Israel. And currently, as we are speaking right now, there was a horrific tragedy and disaster in which seven aid workers for the um, uh, World Central Kitchen were targeted and they lost their lives and yet the idf is indicating that it was an accident or potential roadside bomb when the evidence looks quite clear that it wasn't a roadside bomb it was from the sky so that's richie torres and so it, with, with his connection with always apac what is the influence like in that congressional district because now many americans are vocally speaking out and yet they are silenced they, they are shocked by the silence sorry for that stutter shocked by the silence of their congressional leaders in that congressional district what is the influence of apac what is the stranglehold in that area that you have to face off against well IPAC or APAC and some of these other special interest groups believe they can just buy congressional districts from poor people. What I'm facing up against is about $1.2, $1.3 million just from IPAC alone to Richie Torres or APAC. Excuse me. I get them confused. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't respect them enough to get the acronym right. The APAC, IPAC. Um, they, they, uh, yeah, about $1.2 million, I think, has been donated to Richie Torres. And this election cycle is where he's gotten most of that money already. Um, and uh, uh, that's just the that's just APAC. I mean, he has like Raytheon money, Lockheed Martin money. He has all the military industrial complex money coming in. Right. The thing with him is that he's young <clears throat> and they're trying to make him the in the principal incumbent. That's the thing. They think they can just buy this district keep him there forever and then he's like he's just a total sellout he's a suit he doesn't actually represent anybody from the bronx and so oh, yeah there you go that's the infographic right there i think i'm right 1.2 million yeah, there you go 1.2 million dollars from pro-israel interest groups and it's um you know uh, it's uh it's 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 a lot worse than that so i don't have that i don't have ipac money i have people money i have the $10 that somebody throws me every Friday and they don't even accept my calls when I, I call all my donors. So if you donate to me, you will get a personal call from me. I get it. I try to call you the moment I see the donation come in. And if you don't answer, I leave you a text. And if, but if you don't respond to my text over my call, then that's on you. But I, I do my best to get back to everyone. I do my best to be gracious um, and, and really express my appreciation and love for people because um you know, as I'm taking this next step forward, I'm scared. I, I am. But I also know the behemoth that I'm going up against. And I know that it requires me to put everything I have into it. Mm -hmm. And when 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 you're when you're doing this kind of campaign, I think it's quite clear that it's, you know, uh, something that's clearly a monumental task um, with this 
challenge that you are doing running as an independent when you hear people say, well, we have the best democracy in the world or, you know, we right now living in dangerous times. We have to face off against Donald Trump. And, you know, we we're hearing about how people are wanting to focus on the presidential election part when it comes down to, to this challenge. Uh, what do you want to say to those that are just critical or dismissive of independence? Because right now we're seeing a low voter turnout, especially for the Democratic primary. If you compare it to what we saw in 2016 and 2020, uh, it is abundantly clear that there is a lack of enthusiasm. So what do you want to say to those critics? And also, how do you reengage with people who for a long time now have been just burnt out by electoral politics? You have I first of all, I don't blame anybody who's been burnt out from electoral politics, you know, even like um, even people who support me, uh, support me cautiously. I had somebody I was just briefing somebody on the fact that I quit my job and they said to me, well, you know, I was volunteering for AOC before she quit her job as a bartender and after she quit her job as a bartender during the campaign. And so they said to me, like, you know, I want I really want to believe in you. They're going to support me. But like. You know, we really hope you don't fall into that track. And what that does for me is like, one, it makes me optimistic. Like, oh, but people think I can actually win. You know, <laughs> I, I can actually it can be done. It can be done. I want to hold out for the yeah. audacity of hope. Sure. But the second thing is, it's like, well, what more can I do to get people to believe in me? I mean, I've been dragged out of events. I've told the truth. I've told the truth unashamedly. I've told some of the biggest people in the media and some of these warmongers to their face to go fuck themselves. I mean, you know, I, I. I don't need to fight for anybody's validity at this point. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for them, whether they want it or not. And it needs to start somewhere. We need to start a movement somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get people to buy into the whole two-party thing. I'm tired of it. Democrat, Republican, it gets you nothing. It's just a way to divide people. You know, this is why I don't play the whole isms game. I don't play the whole, you know, are you a socialist? Are you a libertarian? I don't play those games because I want people to actually think about what I'm saying rather than try and label me and dismiss me as one thing or another. You know, I want people to actually, you know, think about what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to portray to people about my campaign and what we're trying to do. Because ultimately, this campaign is not about me. It's a proof. It, it has to be a proof that justice can overcome a clear injustice. There's no reason why Richie Torres, who represents the poorest congressional district in the Bronx, should be allowed to continue to represent this, despite the fact that he supports a genocide and despite the fact that he's getting obscene amounts of money from pro-Israel lobby groups, right? And what should, poor people should not be allowed to run. You know what's crazy, Kit? I can't pay myself more than what I made last year on this campaign, right? So the poverty line here in New York City is $34,000. You know what I'm going to report in taxes this month? $23,000, right? So the most I can pay myself is $400 a week. That is what I'm going to be living off of. Like to your audience, like can you live off $400 a week in New York City? Good luck. I mean, I'm going to just try and be bare bones. That's just what I'm going to have to do because I have, you know, no other option at this point. But that's what I mean. I'm throwing myself completely into this come what may. And, you know, I got. Yeah. So. So what was the question. Well no, nah, I think you're answering it. I understand. Look, I understand the burnout. I understand the stress. Uh, I've, I've interviewed my fair share of independence. And look, I said on, on this show, even before you ran, when we first met you in 2022 and do dissidents did that documentary series on you as well. Um, you know, you're one of the dauntless few. And dare I say it, it helped inspire many people to stand up and actually confront these politicians, even their favorite ones, such as AOC or Bernie Sanders, because we have to cross that Rubicon. It's very clear that that while you have AOC now, I guess, saying the word genocide on the congressional floor, she's not really saying doing anything further to really stop it. So when 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 you see these politicians, it's quite clear that they they understand how the game is played. And look, I want us to say you're, you're doing a hell of a job. So I would I wouldn't back down if I were you. And uh, I, I want to ask you this when it comes down then to the media, because obviously you're going to be hosting events. Are there any kind of events that people uh, right now could attend so they could support you? Uh, is there anything you want to promote? Because right now, I think word of mouth and ease of that on social media is the best way for people to follow your campaign and to show up because it's always a numbers game and voter turnout is going to be key. And if the primaries are anything, it's 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 canary in the coal mine that you got to get your legion set up. So uh, is there anything you want to promote or anything that's going to be happening between now and the day you have to hand in those petitions? Um, 
I mean, yeah, we're going to have training sessions set up. We have April 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th blocked off specifically just to train people, you know, and to meet me in the Bronx and the address as to where that'll be will be revealed to you when you sign up on my site. So mm -hmm. best thing is, is to sign up on my site. And I'm so glad we're doing this now, Kit, because you just reminded me, uh, I have a fundraiser with Jimmy Dore set up for June 6th. And fantastic. That should, up, that should be up, hopefully, by the time uh, people are watching this. But I mean, I, I hope so, because then people can start donating that way. You know, that, that'll, I'm telling you, it'll all be up on the site. I know you're looking at the site, it's not updated. Hopefully, it will all be updated by tomorrow. Very and, soon. Uh, very, it'll be updated very soon. People can can come to the fundraiser if they want, or they can just donate to make the fundraiser happen. It's happening at a really nice venue where I know the owners. It's great. It's going to be a good time. That's happening June 6th. That's after petitioning. So it'll be a nice little celebration for people if we get on the ballot and if we if we actually do this right. So, yeah. Fantastic. But, uh, Real yeah. quick here, I do want to play this video, and this was brought up in my notes right here, but this is uh, where you're telling people to sign up. So if you don't mind, let's just play this minute-long video. Again, we'll be posting all these links on our social media, especially when we uh, update our account, so we'll be uploading this video very soon. Uh, but this is where people can go. So let's go ahead and play this video here, and at least before you hear that, from... Before you, play that, before you play that, I just got to say, I look, ter I, I look terrible now, but I looked even worse there. I was like, I was tired and I was hungry and I was just stressed because I was like, shit, I really just quit my job. So <laughs> and, uh, yes. anyway, hey, okay, go well, ahead. Oh, Jose, Jose, I wanted to say this. Your action standing up to AOC and all these other Democratic jagoffs should inspire other people to do the same thing. So I wish you and your campaign all the best. And I encourage my colleagues in independent media. Obviously, Jimmy Dore is going to be helping you out. Shout out to Jimmy Dore and, and whoever else to uh, make sure that you have a chance to get the word out there. Because if there's anybody who can challenge these bastards, it's you. And I say, don't give up. So let's go ahead and hear from Jose Vega himself. It's Jose Vega here. All right, look, here's the deal. A lot of you asked me to run, and I did it. I took the plunge, and now I'm an independent candidate for Congress. And I need you to do something for me, which is that I need people to be out on the streets from April 16th to May 28th because I need at least 10,000 signatures from people in the Bronx who say they want to see me on the ballot come November. So in other words, when people go vote in November for Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Kennedy, or whatever poison they want to pick, they want to see my name there next to Richie Torres's name. We need 10,000 signatures and we need to start collecting them in two weeks. And I need you to sign up on my website. Go on my website. The link is votevega.nyc slash volunteer. You'll see the link come up right here. I need your help. I cannot do this without you. I just quit my job and I am going full head on into this campaign. I'm not asking you to do the same, but I need your help. I need these signatures and I can't do it without you. All right. So let me ask you, and this is like something else, because obviously, you know, you're doing the work, you're getting the signatures and you got people helping you out. And we are happy to give you a platform here. But let's just uh, kind of relax it as we're kind of getting close to the end time here. Um, what do you do to decompress? Because obviously this is a stressful job. You know, you got your interviews to set up. You got events to set up, coordinating with your organizers, your campaign staffers, and people who are speaking truth to power. Uh, what do you do to decompress? What does Jose Vega do just finally just choose just to relax, man? I pine over my heartbreaks. No. <laughs> <laughs> We could talk about that off air, kid. I can't have that out. But uh, uh, one of the things that I, I that has been keeping me honestly level headed is having an amazing campaign staff. And what I'll do, actually, they've been sitting around me this entire time. You know, there's Kynan. People know Kynan. Asan, Kynan, shout out to you. Yeah, Adrian's my treasurer. I mean, these guys keep me level headed all the time. By the way, this is RBN merch. By the way, this is NATO as a terrorist shout organization. It's not my merch, but shout I'm from RBN. It. Yeah, shout out, shout to, out to Revolution Black. Yeah, shout out to the crew at Revolution Blackout Network and to the crew members there. Much love to you guys. Work harder. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're doing, honestly, they're doing a great job. I would not be where I am if it wasn't for this amazing staff that keeps me level headed and calm whenever I'm manic or whenever I'm distracted. They keep the ship afloat, they keep the ship tight. Um, and what I do to decompress. Well, I don't know. Maybe I need to decompress. I mean, occasionally I go box at the boxing gym that's right near down the street from where I live. Um, mm -hmm. I'll listen to some good classical music. I might even sing some music myself. Uh, but people 
donate a thousand dollars, I'll upload a video of me singing a song. No, I <laughs> I would just do that regardless. I would do that regardless. But and I try to memorize poetry on the side, and then just sleep, man. I just I sleep, I sleep. So I'm still used to waking up at like five thirty six in the morning because of my barista job. So mm -hmm. you know it's good though. But now I don't have an alarm, so I feel rested, not anxious in the morning, and you know. Overall, just have some good friends and don't forget to laugh. That's the other thing. You know, I have somebody on my staff who I love. I'm not going to say his name because, but like, he's just way too serious and uptight sometimes. You got to, you got to be a little funny sometimes. You got to, you got to learn to roll with the punches and you got to just not take yourself too seriously either. So mm -hmm. I think that helps. Well, man, Jose, uh, first of all, I, I know that you've been uh, working on a lot of stuff here. And I know that even uh, potentially Do Dissidents is actually hosting a live event too in New York City. So, uh, and I think you'll I'm be on, on the, the panel. panel. Oh, fantastic. So, I mean, not only that, you're, you're doing some great stuff. And I wish you all the best for the petition signatures. If there's any kind of event or, uh, you know, link that we should share on social media, please update us so that we can get the word out there. Because independent candidates is a way to go. And I've said this on the show. I believe in third parties. I believe that people need to have another option. And so as for a final word, what do you want to say to those who are perhaps, you know, looking at this election cycle and of course they're dreading a trump biden rematch which is obviously going to happen i predicted this would happen in 2020 this is nothing new we all saw this happening i mean this was going to happen it was a foregone conclusion but to those that maybe are uninspired what what words of encouragement would you say to people like who are maybe want to get involved for one last hurrah yeah well um our campaign idea and uh, my team is vehemently against slogans. I like it, but uh, they, they think we should call it ideas is vote Vega, elect yourself. The idea behind that is that I'm not going to wait till November to stop something because that's not going to happen. We don't have till November. People are dying every day. My campaign is centered around what are we going to do between now and next week? What are we going to do between now and tomorrow, now and next month? That is what my campaign is centered around. But Honestly, even if you're not working on a campaign, even if you hate me, if you denounce me, whatever, look at yourself and think about what are you doing? Because electoral politics is not about voting. It's not about getting behind a candidate. Electoral politics is what are you going to do to influence your country? There's one thing I always keep with me, which is what Kennedy, JFK, not, not this Kennedy says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for it. And I think that really resonates now today. A lot of people don't like your country. I don't think we've had an America, a United States of America, since we put a bullet between Kennedy's brains, right? I think it just died that day. I'm trying to revive an idea of what people want America to be. But more importantly, what do you want the future to look like 50 years from now? That's electoral politics. I don't give a shit who you vote for. What are you doing so that 50 years from now, there is a better future and a brighter future? doesn't matter who you vote for today. What matters is what you're going to do, because most change in this country does not come from voting. It has never come from voting. So I know it's funny for me saying that as a candidate trying to get votes. But at the same time, like I'm trying to change something for the better. I'm not necessarily chasing a vote. I'm chasing change, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why if you if you don't know how to start that, join my campaign and I'll give you a way forward. Sounds like a good note to end it on. Jose, as always, I appreciate the time that you took. I wish your campaign all the best. Please give keep us updated in regards to your petition signature sign up and how many signatures that you got, and hopefully that you will be on the ballot. So I'm encouraging uh, anyone, if you have time out of your day, I don't care what state you live in, if you want to just do phone calls, phone banking for Jose Vega, he's one of the dauntless few. He has spoken out against jagoff politicians, be they Democrat or Republican. He's called out hypocritical people in the media establishment, be they Rachel Maddow or these jagoffs at Columbia University. Shout out to Kynan as well, your colleague who recently we even talked about on our show as well, uh, who, again, we have to call out all these bastards in the corporate neoliberal two-party establishment system. You're one of the dauntless few. So I'm going to just say this, folks. If you haven't had time, please check out Jose Vega. Follow him on his social media. Uh, his website will be updating, of course. So we're just going to end this segment with some music by Jesse Jett. Thank you so much for your time, Jose. Please take good care of yourself and everyone else. We'll see you guys tomorrow live on our show, 9 a.m. Central on YouTube, Rockfin, Odyssey, and Kick. Please take good care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you around. I guess this isn't such an awful place. 
Is that what you want me to say? You prove it's possible to sleep for days And to still think you're right here awake The cost of living isn't much to make But God, it's so hard to save And when they told you everything was safe Will you be safe? Were you safe? Were you safe? Were you safe? I guess this isn't such an awful place. Is that what you want me to say? You prove it's possible to sleep for days And I still think you're right here away The cost of living isn't much to make But God, it's so hard to say And when they told you everything was safe Were you safe? Fresh off the mass is the brand new cancerous growth Who has come here to vie for your vote Come here to cry at the camps and to mourn at the shore For the bodies that float by the wreck of an immigrant boat Then it's back to their luxury home Couple security booths and a moat Couple cigars, little escargot, little booze and a soak Just breathe in the steam and the smoke Pink salt, lavender, candles are low Shit, when you do what you do, gotta lighten the load And he got a life of his own that's a sight to behold and it's a lot to control to decipher the code or decipher the soul The cost of a good night's sleep for the working elite is a bargain no matter the toll mm. Worth any wager and that comes straight from the mouth of the means to the goal That will swallow us whole Right for the picking if you don't mind mold And you know I don't Maybe we're pleasantly prone Maybe we're taking a licking compliantly Ticking and ticking and ticking but never explode no, I don't deliver the prettiest image, but damn if it is an accurate vision of natural vision, of rage at the system and abject heartbreak, patiently waiting for any who will listen. That little blue bird who was watching your words is a federal carrier pigeon, a Langley first. It's a patient observer who hears what it wants and is trained for the worst. Oh, you got nothing to hide. They'll be the ones to decide that after they root through your purse, after they read all your texts, after they raid your apartment, confiscate all of its contents, then conjure up evidence out of the air on a wing and a prayer and malicious intelligence nonsense. Any presumption of innocence long since gone, right along with your comforts and constants. Historically first, they will come for the communists. <laughs> so why in the fuck would I say I'm a communist? Well, it might be I love my community more than the monsters of opulence Who are holding us hostage Who are vomiting promises Might be I'm all done seeing our pensions and benefits harvested Might be I'm all done watching the populace being disarmed in the guise of an armistice Watching a woman collapse on the floor who will rise no more She's wheeled out the door and you're next in line for the pharmacist If you can get me to vote, it's a hard no confidence but part of the charm of deception is politics wearing the mask of incompetence It's all in the art of austerity, darling, it's all in the slide of the providence Until home is as wide as your cubicle height and is only as deep as your coffin is Maybe I'm miles away from impatience, aching to break off the head of the snake Where the capital lost reptile brain and the margin of profit is Like off with his Like off with his I guess this isn't such an awful place Is that what you want me to say? You prove it's possible to sleep for days And to still think you're right here awake The cost of living isn't much to make But God, it's so hard to say And when they told you everything was safe Will you save?